Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session for Friday, October the 5th, 2018. My name is Doug McKay. I'm the founder of Quantum Leap Futures. Each morning we get together in these live go-to sessions, take a look at the market macro to micro, take a look at the structure of the market, and then we drill down to our trade levels, our targets, and our hypotheses. We do create multiple hypotheses. These are our trade plans. We do not know what the market's going to do. Therefore, we have multiple plans in place, wait for the market to open up, and then execute the plan once we see uh, who's in control that best suits the market. This is a subscription room. If you're interested in checking it out, send me an email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com. There's no website, there's no blog. This is not a commercial venture. We do everything live here in the go-to, and then we do live trading and analysis during the course of the trading day. Please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results in the trades that you see in Quantum Leap. Uh, for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. Okay, taking a look at yesterday. Yesterday, we opened auction. Now, uh, <clears throat> in the earlier yesterday morning, I was having problems with my charts, but I put a, a, a chart of the yield overnight of the 30-year bond, and uh, we during the course of the night, I had a huge spike, and I had... Uh, I had warned everybody that uh, that would likely lead to a big move down in the indices. And uh, I was warning people uh, not to uh, try to fade any move to the downside. <clears throat> and uh, I missed the first part of this. And uh, unfortunately, because I had uh, Sean from IRT uh, working on my charts, he was logged on to my computer because I was having a data issue. Um, we opened auction at a range. We immediately had an initiative drive. This right here, to me, even though it was a, uh, you know, basically a six or seven point move uh, back up, this to me was a uh, the entry of the day if you missed the first move. And this was the rejection of the uh, VWAP for the continuation wave that took us down and I had uh, said that if we got below uh, 2,900 that the likely destination was gonna be that naked VPOC and uh, the microcomposite VPOC down there at the uh, 2,894. And uh, we got right there and then we bounced 10 and three quarter points and then we came down and at that point in time I had mentioned that the key support was gonna be that 90, uh, 90 to 88 level and we actually got down to the 87.75 and then 11 and a quarter up impulse up continuation and then back down uh to uh test the uh 98 area and then a rotation back up and we actually closed uh inside uh of the 2900s and uh and held inside so i mean this was a big day down. Our uh, full session high at the time uh, yesterday was 31.75. So uh, we had a full session ATR or range of 44. And then we had a uh, RTH session of 36.25. That's the biggest range we've seen, uh, you, know, uh, you know, in a bit. So uh, a lot of opportunity. Volatility brings opportunity as long as you keep your uh, your risk uh, in check and not get uh, stubborn, you can really take a lot out of the market. I actually ended up having a decent day yesterday, um, even though I missed the uh, the first uh, the first part of the day. So taking a look at the news, of course, we just had non-farm payroll. We were just talking about that in the room. Uh, had some good uh, opportunity there. The uh, just running through the news, the hourly uh, earnings was uh, was as expected. Same uh, same thing with the average weekly hours. Uh, exports was a bit of a miss. Government payrolls was a bit a bit of a miss. Imports was a bit of a miss. Uh, Non-farm uh, you know uh, came out and was a bit of a miss. Uh, although the manufacturing payrolls was uh, was better and the trade was uh, better. Uh, private non-farm was, uh, was a miss. Uh, so it was kind of a mixed bag, and they had that impulse wave up into the 15s. And uh, the scene of the crime was uh, uh, 650, 
And uh, then we came down to that 650 and they went through it and we went down and tested uh, what is now the low of the night, uh, low of the Globex down in that uh, 98 area. Uh, continuing news, uh, we've got uh, 1030, we've got the ESARA Weekly. Uh, we do have Bostic speaking and Baker speaking from, uh, sorry, Bostic speaking from the Fed. And then we've got the uh, uh, rig count. Um, so there's not a lot other than the rig count there's, and, uh, and Bostic speaking, there's not a lot of scheduled economic news past the non-farm. So this is going to set the tone for the day. Just keep an eye on the 2900s. Uh, that's going to be basically our over underline. If we can hold inside of the 2900s, I'm thinking we're likely going to see a balancing day. Uh, inside of yesterday's range and uh, and just going sideways. The catalyst to this is, of course, we've got the Kavanaugh uh, uh, vote today you know, for the uh, Supreme Justice, and uh, that should uh, probably cause some volatility as that vote. It doesn't, I don't know when the vote's going to be, but it's something that you want to be uh, aware of because it's likely going to cause some volatility to coming in to come in. So. Take a look at the overnight inventory. The overnight inventory is, you know, fairly balanced. Uh, you know, we had, you know, we had a, a fairly uh, good Gaussian distribution last night. The VPOC did shift down uh, uh, just before the news down to uh, 475, but you know, we remained inside of yesterday's profile. I'm just gonna. I'm just going to tighten this up and, uh, you know, why I think the, uh, the tone is going to be set to the downside is <clears throat> we had all this balance up here and then yesterday we broke the low of that balance. So this is, was a bit of an impulse wave. This is a, uh, a pullback and we're likely to balance here with a downside drift towards, uh, you know, getting a continuation wave. So I mean that is uh, is my main hypothesis, but we'll get in we'll get into that in just a minute. Let's take a look at uh, each morning. I do the same thing. This I cannot, and yesterday is a perfect example of why I do this. So let's just go through it. I start with the monthly. I use a simple candlestick chart with the 9 EMA and 20 SMA. Those are the moving averages I use on all my charts. Uh, and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for slope and separation, okay, for strength of the trend and where the trend would be challenged on each uh, on each time frame on the larger time frame. And I've I've mentioned this uh, you know every day for the last uh, I don't know how long that. On the bigger time frame, we don't even come close to uh, violating, even challenging the trend until we get down into the lower 2800. Uh, the 9 EMA is sitting right now at 2800. So a pullback down to 2800 is not the, you know, where everybody, I see all the gurus out there, uh, all the talking heads now talking about, oh, the top is in, you know, and uh, this is the uh, start of the bear market. How can they say that? Okay, I mean, you know, we don't, we haven't even come close to violating the bigger time frame trend. We don't even violate that trend until back in the 2600s, uh, the low 2600s. So a pullback all the way there is not a bear market. It's a natural pullback. And yesterday, you know, even that move down yesterday only came down and tested the 9 EMA. I mean, we basically we had a inside uh, inside bar on the weekly with a technical gap, and we came back and closed the technical gap, and now we've bounced. So we don't challenge the trend until we get below yesterday's low, and that's just challenging. We don't violate the trend, okay, until we get down to the 2830s. That's on the weekly, but on the monthly, we're still in an upward trend. So just keep that in mind. Does it mean that we're not going to get a pullback? Quite possible we will, because you know, on the smaller time frame, on the daily, now we're below the 9 EMA and the 20 SMA. So we are getting a possible change of trend on the daily, not on the bigger picture. 
So uh, this would be a natural pullback, and it just gives you perspective of not getting sucked into that smaller time frame and everybody's you know putting on their bear caps and saying oh this is the start of the uh, the downtrend and the and the high is in for the year and that's just you know that's just ridiculous to make those claims yet um so we do have a possible start uh a move back up into the 16 area would uh, and above and remember yesterday we were using that 16 area i said you know you have to remain bearish uh, for the day until we get back above that 16 and uh, we're currently still below that and a move back again above that is going to uh, you know get me thinking to the long side again going to the 24 uh, the 240 or the four hour you can see that we have started this downward trend we've come up and tested the 9 EMA several times got good slope got good separation you've got to be thinking to the short side right now we'll be looking at critical mass marvin in just a few minutes let me get there and going to the 30 minute you can see that there's the news okay big doji bar okay and we're really not violating the uh i mean we're testing the trend and possibly violating it on the on the 30 minute but we are trying to get back above uh, above there and if we get above I'm using that uh, I'm going to be using the 2909 as my over underline again and 16 as my key line uh, in the sand above and I'm going to be using the 2900 as my key line uh, in the sand below and I'll show you why in just a minute let's go to the structure take a look at the structure you can see that uh, we, yesterday we came right back to the overall balance that we've been in the microcomposite VPOC from the gap up day right here on the uh, 24th uh, you know uh, of August um, and we moved all the way into new all-time highs and what did they do they came down to that balance pushed through almost got to this microcomposite VPOC down here at the 85 and a quarter but they found the buyers really at the uh, value area low uh, and you know and held inside of this large value now we're back above the 2900 and we're coming up into that over underline which is going to be 950 I said 9 it's actually going to be 950 and if we get above that it would be nothing to see a rotation up into the uh, the 16 area which I'm going to be using as my uh, my uh, oh, uh, my key line in the sand. Why? Because it breaks us outside of this current uh, this five day balance right here. The value area high there is the 1650, and I'd be looking for a move up into that 19 area, uh, which is what we were looking at in that uh, micro composite from the next balance area just above. Uh, so key levels to pay attention to: uh, 950, 1650. Uh, 2900 and then of course uh, you know a break below the 94 would probably give us a continuation wave below the low of yesterday at 8770 uh, 8775 so overnight inventory pretty much balanced so I'm not worrying about balancing here I think it's all going to be about the levels today in terms of uh, what we what we did on non-farm um, you know, we went to 15, so we didn't get back above that 16 level. And then we rotated through the scene of the crime. I'm going to put the scene of the crime in here. 650, we're trading right at it. Overnight high is 15. 1550 and our overnight low is 98 and a quarter okay so in terms of hypotheses now a couple things uh, I adjusted our upside daily ATR our 20 period daily ATR is running at 2089 so off of the overnight low of 98 and a quarter our uh, daily upside ATR target is at 19 <laughs> 
right there at that microcomposite VPOC uh, at the 19 area uh, off of the overnight high of 1550. Uh, was it 1550? Yes, it was. Uh, of the uh, 1550, our downside daily ATR is down here at that 94.75 right near that microcomposite VPOC at 94. Our month open is all the way up at 22.50. We have, I'm sorry, month and week open. So uh, off of the 22.50, one period ATR gives us our weekly critical mass down here at 29.01.75. I'm gonna be using the 2900 I hate using centennial numbers, but I have to do it. And this 2900 is going to be my over underline. I'm sorry, key line in the sand below. The 0950 is going to be my over under. Okay, so in terms of hypotheses, uh, we are opening up in balance, okay, right at yesterday's VPOC and yesterday's close. And, uh, you know, we had a pretty good, uh, you know, uh, Gaussian distribution overnight, so we're in balance. So I am looking for an open auction in range. And I'm looking for wide opening swings with no clear. If you look at the value area yesterday, even though I consider this to be a trend type scenario, we closed right back inside of the uh, of the uh, IB and uh, above the mid. So you really can't call the day a trend day. It had trending, uh, you know, uh, occurrence. But then the other side took it back, so we had a downward channel that was broken to the upside, and we've, create, we've created an upward channel. And basically, we traded, okay, overnight, okay, still in an upward channel. Uh, I can draw it for, for you, but I didn't do it prior, so I'm not going to uh, try to extend this session. So uh, I'm looking for an open auction in range, wide rotations, I'm looking for a balancing day with a downward skew, and I expect to break the low of the overnight session, come down into this 94, and I'm actually expecting it to find a base here and start working its uh, way back up. I mean, we might get down to testing the 87 area again, but I think we're going to you know, have a tighter range than yesterday. So open auction, in range, uh, a move up somewhere to the value area high and then failure and move down and just chopping slowly down to take out the overnight low, possible late day probe down into the 94, basing and rotating back up and closing somewhere between 2900 and 2910. Uh, I can't give you a tighter range for close just because of the fact that it's I'm expecting a, a, a lot of chop. Um, secondary hypothesis, because we're in balance and I'm looking for a balancing day, is going to be almost equally weighted. Um, but based on the non-farm payroll, uh, my skew is slightly to the downside, but I'm looking for an open auction in range. I'm looking for a push down into the uh, 98 and then find uh, buyers and start working our way back and just slowly drifting up towards the uh, uh, 2912 with maybe a late day probe up into the 19, but coming back and closing uh, inside of yesterday's value area. That is hypo two. Because the continuation or the impulse down yesterday, my hypo three is going to be a breakdown continuation and uh, open auction in range or an open test drive and a push down immediately below the 2900 chop between the 29, uh, 2898 and 2894, and then a push down and a continuation wave, and I'm targeting down here in the 8175. That is hypo three. And I would expect to close 
uh, somewhere between the 80 and the 94 area uh, on the bottom uh, side of yesterday's range. That is hypo three. Because the overall trend is up, hypo four is a continuation up. And that would be a open auction in range, failure to take out the overnight low, maybe a, uh, a test of the 2900, but holding critical mass, okay, and then starting to walk up and just a, a, a slow grind up towards the month open and the week open and closing above and coming up with almost like a doji week and, uh, and closing somewhere up here uh, between the 22 and the, uh, the this overnight high is from the other day, uh, the uh, value area from two days ago. Remember, we still have a naked close uh, up here at the uh, 29.3150. Um, so uh, just don't forget that the, we still have the unequalized all-time high and the overall trend is up. There is a fifth hypothesis, and that is simply uh, a small 9-point to 12-point range, and we just chop inside of the, uh, of the value area from yesterday and uh, basically, you know, uh, test the 2,900 and test the, uh, the 29.12, maybe even a probe to 15, but basically just chopping around in this blunt area. This is very blunt, uh, no clear uh, acceptance of value yesterday and uh, chopping basically around the overnight Gaussian distribution with the VPOC at uh, 0450. So that's what I'm looking at in the ES. In gold, nothing changes. <laughs> Absolutely nothing changes in gold. Um, you know, we're just sitting in this distribution, okay, this, uh, this upper distribution right here. And we keep testing below 1,200, but we keep holding. I'm still thinking now they try to take it down several times. They can't. And, uh, you know, we're likely if we can get above this 0850 area to test the 12 to 13 and any break above the 12 to 13, I think gives us our next leg up at least into the 20 to 22 area. But the target is still 33 and a quarter. Nothing has changed. It said the same thing. Now, if we break back below the 96, a test of the 90, and anything below 90, I think we break the fractal low here at the 84.30 and change. You know, I still think my uh, my hypothesis still uh, still that this is a basing pattern and that the next uh, leg will be up, but uh, you know. A couple times it looked like I was going to be wrong to the downside, and that's why we have levels. You know, we know where we're going to be wrong and where we should start thinking and flipping our uh, our hypothesis to the opposite side. So key levels to pay attention to: 850, 1380, uh, the 20 on the upside, and to the downside, the 1200, of course, uh, the 1196. 1190, and uh, of course, the fractal low at the 8430. So that's going to complete our pre market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.